who's been really great. Um, he's been a great resource to kind of, kind of put us in the right direction, or just an unconventional direction, and kind of steer us back to the social media. Um, and I think it's been an interesting kind of experiment. <laughs> we had decided to do some sort of uh, contest with Aiden's help. It was kind of his idea to use our generation and social media aptitude to try to create some sort of contest with either a monetary prize or we even talked about having a beer prize to kind of have people, you know, in their 20s and their 30s kind of approach, as renters, approach uh, energy efficiency at all, really. Um, I think it was... So, so, so the contest is pretty big. It's ongoing. Right. Um, and so basically what it is is you take a photo showing some sort of inefficiency. Whether that be the drafty window, um, insulation that's missing in your home, a leaky faucet, to bring the conversation online. Um, and so we have yet to really get any posts, um, and I think it's because we're having trouble. The Facebook only has a limited audience, um, and we're thinking of trying to go to local events. We have little handouts about the contest. So in order to get a face-to-face -face interaction started, and then it can go online. Um, hopefully creating an atmosphere that gets people to tell their stories about energy inefficiency, um, to then be able to help them on their path to making their residences more energy efficient. So that's something that we're kind of asking from all of you, because since we're Smith students, we're not tapped into necessarily the Northampton community. Um, we're searching for local events, um, environmentally related or not, um, that we can pass our flyers around and get the word out. Um, a second aspect, we had talked to Aiden a little bit about the smart growth rezoning initiatives um, that are happening downtown. And so we're hoping that we, if it's not already available, creating a map of all rental units in either a certain ward of Northampton um, or a certain area that would be most beneficial to all of you in order to be able to maybe target those areas in the future. Um, we contacted the assessor's office. They do not have a map like that, um, but they said, have you talked to the planning board? Um, I left a message with them. They didn't pick up. But I, we kind of wanted to see if that's something that would benefit all of you um, moving forward. Um, yeah, I think a big part of the reason why we're here is to kind of ask what we can do for you, I mean, we do have a limited amount of time that's left on the project, but um, to kind of talk about some of the other ideas that we have as well, and kind of the hiccup. So I'm going to, um, do you want to go? Uh, yeah, <laughs> just get up there, Very so on the, it's uh, <laughs> like formal and informal at the same time. So the other thing that we wanted to make sure that um, you know as um, a, just a connection from, from Smith and uh, working with the town in the future is that um, so our senior course is offered every semester. We will always have a student group, even if it's just two of them, um, that might be available to continue um, work that we've done or take on other initiatives in the future. So we want to make sure that you know that that's a student body that could um, continue to collaborate with. Um, we also have uh, various opportunities funded through the school for interns or um, students always kind of wanting to get involved, so we wanted to put that as a platform too of saying that uh, even if our efforts um, uh, don't really want to follow through some kind of hope for or lacking responses from the avenues that we thought we'd get a lot of responses, um, one of our big goals for, for our work right now is to be really clear what we've done, um, how we might, the ideas for, for proceeding in the future, so we could leave that for the next kind of of students if that was something that we were interested in. other um, ways of reaching everyone in the local community about home energy efficiency. Um, and then we had this, this other direction that we've been going, which is to focus specifically on rented buildings, um, talking with renters and landlords. Um, as part of the Smart Smart Initiative and Increasing Density um, in the town, kind of looking forward um, <coughs> as to how we can help that um, kind of in an under, way of understanding what um, 
barriers there are for, um, you know, if I'm, I'm a student renter, so what power, what, um, what ability do I have to influence my landlord to maybe help with uh, increasing my units and efficiency, um, or what are his perspectives on um, upfront costs and how he kind of maintains his building. Um, so we wanted to sort of map that out, and um, in working with this, we've taken it through an angle of talk uh, through mass date, so calling the mass date number and getting a free home energy audit scheduled. We wanted to look at that process and um, map out what people need to know you know before they make that phone call, um, what information would be helpful for them to whether it's an incentivizing that phone call or just ways to make it easier because it's a lot, a lot to mesh through the rebate process and <coughs> figuring out um, whether you qualify for fuel assistance and that kind of thing. So we're trying to get a sense of the barriers and how to maybe help provide more information or just clarity for those. So that's the other spin that we have on this. Anything else? Um, else yeah, I, I know that we did, um, I did talk to Deirdre and Manning um, about some different directions that we could go um, as far as different ideas to just generate knowledge. I, I felt like when, when Chris came to talk to us, it was the first time I'd heard of really any kind of energy uh, initiatives or any kind of assistance that you can get, um, rebates, incentives, things like that, um, that there's a lot of really great stuff, but for some reason it's not being utilized, it's, it's not as uh, user friendly as it ought to be, even though, you know, the mass save, I guess the mass save facade, you know, is kind of one of those things that you, you're working through. You know, we had to lead a call and kind of go through the different steps, and there were certain things that you needed to know, like you needed to know the code for your utility company, you needed to know whether or not you had gas or oil, and that was something as a renter, she had to go then hang up, go find out from her landlord, and then she had to also, you know, have the energy to call back and care. You know, so there's there's kind of a disconnect between those things. Um, but we thought that there there could be some like fun ways around town. Um, I don't know, to kind of put like this with color spin on it too. Um, one of the things they do around campus is chalking on the ground. And I um, I know Alita and I talked yesterday about. She said that she'd seen CDS do some sort of um, chalk like not, a chalk artist. Not CDS. Yes, the, there's a there's an art the art gallery. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So I don't know if they're associated with that, but that's where I've seen it. Downtown, yeah. people blew the chalk murals. Um, I didn't know if anybody knows those artists, or if we have a way of contacting them to maybe commission, commission a design. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> the <laughs> whole way people talking about, you know, NESC, Mass Save, um, to get them to kind of realize beyond, you know, into December when it's cold and their energy bill is high. It's like, what is, what is the cost of energy to them? So, really, that's, you know, that was another thing. And then Deirdre um, also kind of brought to my attention, uh, is it Reading Boston or Re oh, Renew? Yep, Renew Boston. Um, it was just this cool little kind of flyer that's going around there. Um, I guess it's an effort to kind of do the same thing that we're trying to do here um, and get people in Northampton to get more insulation, to get an energy audit at all, to, re to understand what it would cost, um, what, what, they, what there was available, because it, it seemed to me that there's a lot. Um, it's just a matter of disseminating that information and making people care, you know, that's what it comes down to. So, um, yeah, I mean, this was a really cool flyer. Basically, it was just like, is your building drafty? Are you losing tenants to high energy bills? Does it have a sense of immediacy, um, a sense of urgency, like, you know, get it done. Um, it also had everything in English and Spanish, and also, I, did we decide this was Creole? Yeah, and Creole, I mean, whatever is necessary around here, but... Um, and also maybe even having like the five things you need if you're going to call and, and have an energy audit. And obviously we can put that together maybe, um, you know, once we have a little bit more data gathered as far as different uh, people who are calling in for energy audits. It's just, um, it's been really interesting to, to kind of navigate these different portals and to kind of see early, you know, before any of us own a home or, you know, really know what that's like to actually have to either rent it out to somebody or pay the bills yourselves. Um, you know, I think for the most part we live in college housing too, so we don't really feel a pinch of the New England winter like we would if we were paying for it. So it's interesting to uh, have gone through that process. But I don't know how much time we have left or what we want to talk about beyond that. I'd like to have the commission have time to yeah. ask yeah, any so questions. Sure, we should. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
some of the frustrations that you describe actually are not unique to your venture. Right. <laughs> um, there's a number of, in Northampton, we pride ourselves in being unique, but it's also part of the stigma that, that comes when you try to try to do information dissemination. Social media, of course, informs one cohort, but mm -hmm. there's a there's a large group of people that don't necessarily access our information Absolutely. through social media. Also, chalk drawing on downtown would speak more to people who don't live in town mm -hmm. than it would to uh, homeowners. Uh, you also have a lot of um, I mean, some of the houses that would probably be more, most critical to focus on are people who've lived in houses for a long time, they're probably over 60, mm -hmm. they're on fixed income, they're clearly looking at a, a terrifying energy uh, burden that comes upon them. Mm -hmm. And the information through the senior center is one way, but that's only, they, the information doesn't get to them, they have to go to the information. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. so, We've been struggling with this on any number of levels, on any number of issues, but this, the, the uh, so I don't want you to feel bad about the frustration <laughs> that you're experiencing because it is something that we've had. But I think to the point that you suggested, a, a, a basically a punch list for people to have. Mm. So that way, if we ever do figure out how, I mean, we, one of the ways that we do is we send out in uh, with. Um, the Department of Public Works when we send out a water bill, mm -hmm. everyone who has consumes water will get that and then there's invariably lots of little other supplements that folks get that, that are relevant and um, that's one way, um, the old fashioned way, snail mail, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and, but if there's a punch list that someone has, for instance, knowing what type of fuel they're using if they're going to call, um, you know, any of the other criteria that, that you know they get tripped up on, and you're absolutely right, the more times that they have to actually do callbacks, sit on hold or anything like that, the more discoveries they're likely to be. Mm -hmm. And it is, unfortunately, the, the easy, sexy bumper sticker transmission message doesn't necessarily translate into action because we can't, because it breaks down, there's all these, there's all sorts of hoops to jump through, and it can be discouraging for someone who starts to get overwhelmed by it information and anything that somebody comes up with that actually distills that to simple, clear language, bullet points or check boxes or something like that, I think would go a long way. I'd say if you could, uh, Louis Hasbro, um, I'd say if you could go through it and with as many people as you can to where you're sure that you can get through it quickly and easily, mm -hmm. then you can translate that into what other people can do. Um, but, but um, I mean, I know that I've gone through that with a few neighbors, and I'm relatively uh, knowledgeable, and it was really difficult. Mm. Um, and, uh, but I think that, and I think people who, who are, you know, I mean, lay people that can get through it are going to be better able to communicate to, to other um, residents. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can get... You can find a few people to get through it with, so that you know exactly what you're going to do, um, which person to call as opposed to the person not to call. Even that would that would be real helpful, I think. And you can bring that back to us. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> um, uh, there was someone uh, Greenfield had an EPA grant. Where's uh, I'm not sure. Did you did you, yeah, did you speak I mean, with her? Yeah, we did. Great. Um, okay, that would be my suggestion. I think it was because she does more low income, ca more can and canvassing, okay. um, which is kind of what we kind of stray from with the okay. social media aspect. Um, but she did give me all of the data that they have. Okay, um, and her experiences. And, right. and she did, yeah, and she's currently mapping out all of the techniques that she used and what were more beneficial than others. Okay, great one. So, can I just add some context for this contest that they're doing? Mm -hmm. they're going, I mean, I sent out an email at the beginning of it explaining what it was, but it's a little bit different than holding people's hands through the programs. And the reason why I suggested going away from that approach is because of the timeline and, and also the split incentive between renters and landlords. So, often it can take months for someone to get an audit visit um, or you know, need a landlord's buy in the challenges there that, that they didn't have the time or resources to do. So, I suggested outside the box around engagement, just getting people thinking about energy efficiency. So then there's the idea of the contest of just people snapping a picture, posting it online uh, via a few different avenues, um, and then 
they would pick like the best or this person that uh, posts the most um, about their home. It could be a, someone who owns a home or someone who rents a home. And that just generates engagement, like they said, like getting people thinking about it and then they're more responsive to the solutions once they're wrapping their mind around the problems. So that was like totally unique. And um, unfortunately, I think that there's the challenge is not having enough time to build the relationships to get enough people who use social media to use that, like partner with businesses and have cards at registers, things like that. Um, so that's that's one way I think we can help, and I think that's that's a little bit different than how do we crack the nut of yeah. getting people through mass aid, which. So two of the thoughts that would send you in a totally different direction, so you may not have any time or interest, but one is we have a commission that talked about energy disclosure, mm -hmm. and we're sort of requiring landlords to disclose how expensive electric bills are, mm -hmm. heating bills are. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if any of you have web skills, but you all seen things like Rate My Professors, yeah. sort of mm -hmm. crowdsourcing, yeah. Yeah. and you're not going to mention doing the crowdsourcing of you know, here's what my electric bill was last week. Right. Here's what my gas bill is. I don't think. I mean, you wouldn't see the effects because it would take a long time for people to discover it. Mm -hmm. But I can imagine being a way to subtly put pressure on landlords to think yeah. about ways to do it. And yeah. you know, and even if you're not web people, to start thinking about what are the steps involved. It's actually a website that mm -hmm. can pull all that data as soon as you sign up, and it track, compares you to other people in your town that also signed up. That's great. It puts you on this linear graph. It's called MyEnergy.com. Oh, cool. I did a project from the company Nest just acquired them, um, the thermostat smart thermostat. It's, it was really cool. It's like it creates that competitive nature. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a little different than identifying my landlord is X. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm way down. Right, yeah. which actually yeah. fits very well for a college yeah. well, college crowd, right? <laughs> 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 right, and that's something yeah. that I mean, feels right that older people are not going to benefit from it. Right. On the other hand, you know, 40% of our housing stock is rental and it's biased towards younger people. So mm -hmm. if it's people you're speaking to that may get the, a lot of those rental housing, it's not going to help them. Well, it's a ground up pressure, which is good as opposed to top down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you can inspire tenants to actually pressure their landlords because that's who's populating the, the apartments and the rental units. And because of pressure, frankly, it's probably something the city wouldn't necessarily want to be involved with doing you guys doing it as to your right. <laughs> and, it's also, and, it, and it lends itself more to social media content. Yeah. I think the social media contact for literally a, a significant portion of the homeowners is that's an uphill battle in, mm -hmm. in going from semester to semester to try and create a continuum where that will work is clearly frustrating. So I would I, I like this idea a lot. I mean, it's the traditional Yankee shaming uh, <laughs> concept, which is, is probably the most Productive <laughs> avenue we have short of fashion. And so it's sort of the, the, I, I, I think that's brilliant. I love that idea because if that comes from the ground up mm -hmm. and it's a grassroots movement and it allows you in limited campuses, essentially campuses of apartment systems, um, to promote it and populate it, it's a lot easier. For instance, it's a lot easier to do a social media system at Smith because you have like minded people, like minded pressures and circumstances mm -hmm. congregating in this place, also with a particular, mm -hmm. a, a, who are a lot more sophisticated in social media than, mm -hmm. than your average MOOC on the street. So in this case, the landlord not, might not be particularly savvy, but they're certainly aware of the fact that they keep getting these annoying emails or letters about the fact that they, they uh, rate pretty poorly. Mm -hmm. or, and, and that there's an opportunity to do better. Mm -hmm. so. And I like your guys' point, you soon to be homeowners. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I first want to applaud your effort, your work, your energy in this, and, and your involvement. Um, thanks very much for that. Um, it sounds though like um, the the capstone will be this semester completing. So I want to make sure we don't lose the momentum. I'm wondering maybe Chris and Aiden have contacts at Smith, professors in your department, and others that we can make sure that as ideas come up or we can tap into the Smith student body, we, we know where to go. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're happy. I was going to ask that. So this is all ending, this is a one semester thing. It is. Yeah. And it's ends actually, to mid-December. Yeah, it's a, it's a four-part series that goes on through the environmental science and policy major. And it's just, they're kind of, and it, all these girls are seniors. I'm not. But um, we talked about doing perhaps the special studies. Um, you know, with a group of us that would, you know, continue this work, this type of work, um, 
we talked about how it just literally having this be the platform that we pass on to the next group that would start this class again. Um, it'd be fresh faces, fresh ideas, um, you know, fresh energy for the for the project itself. Um, but every semester, this class is, I mean, every single semester. So you'd have this 312 class. Yeah, we also have practice funding for a lot of summer internships. Um, yeah. So that's definitely something we could. So, I mean, if we, you know, in, in, as an intern capacity, if that could be something that could be written up and then, you know, con to continue this type of work or um, just, to, just to keep that momentum going because, you know, we don't want to let the ball drop and we certainly don't want the, <laughs> the prize to go to. Um, we were talking about the people that posted the, the photos online because I, I have a lot of the girls that, that live around me, um, the eight of, eight of Comstock scholars are women of a non-traditional age, 24 and older, that are Smiths, uh, Smith students. But just in case you didn't know, I didn't know, I don't know if everybody knows that. But um, I contacted a lot of the girls. You know, there, were, there was a lot of enthusiasm. It's like, wow, that's really easy. This is something we could do. We could generate, you know, all this uh, energy for energy. Um, and unfortunately, it fizzled a little bit. But we're, when we're going to the end of November, so we're, you know, as far as trying to keep the energy up for this, I feel like it would be a pretty nice do's and don'ts package to potentially pass on to somebody else too. So definitely. I mean, my, I mean, I'm, I'm very excited by the staying power of this model and of. Um, is there a is there a faculty advisor to this? There's yeah, a, yeah. He's um, the director of the environmental science and policy program. Yeah, David. Yeah. So, and, uh, if you, I, yeah, you know, I, I know. Well, well, I know him because I. Presented yeah. his class, and I was connecting with him to see if any of the students were interested in taking the So, we've been introduced, I and now have, and so I, the I intend on continuity around yes. on that level as well. Yes, I will. I will stay in touch with David on, on this, and I also need yeah. to find out how to take advantage of interns. Yeah. Um, which Wayne, I know you did. But, uh, so take advantage of. Uh, yeah, yeah, the other words, you just did the big ones. No, I'm going to get on this work and dig out the sewers. <laughs> but it'd be great for us to think how we can help in the next two weeks. But you, you asked for uh, places that you could yes, go to like local, events. local events. So could we focus on that for a few minutes? And then maybe if other commissioners have more ideas, pass them to me and I can pass them on. Yeah, or, um, or, or even just ways to advertise in any yeah. capacity. I mean, using newspapers, other other things to very open to. Um, we just, from my office, we, we just did a community outreach effort for the energy strategies mm -hmm. planning. Mm -hmm. And I won't, I won't go over it all right now, but it's kind of all the neighborhood associations we reached out to and our contacts and stuff. So I would be happy to let you guys know about that. Yeah, really cool. uh, farmers markets are about to end, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, um, really but that was uh, a good avenue. But I'm going to leave it up to uh, folks who are more connected with North Tampa than you and I. I'm going to ask us to take a photo of some inefficiency in your home and post it. Or email it to one of them and they'll post it. And the idea is to just catalog some inefficiencies, a whole boiler, um, leaky windows, is probably a really common one. What I see a lot is air conditioners filling windows. Mm -hmm. People are hoping the temps are going to go back up. <laughs> <laughs> air conditioning levels. <laughs> yeah. um, but I mean, uh, I've been in your house. Um, you know, I know you have some. I, have, I never even occurred to me that I'm supposed to take the air conditioner out of the window. <laughs> not even kidding. I mean, I, don't, I should be humiliated to confess that, but that, so I don't even know how humiliated I should be. <laughs> I, we have one air conditioner on the third floor. It's just been here since we moved in. Twelve years ago. And Bill, I walk by your house every day, and I can imagine my imagination runs wild. What's going on? Uh, it's a meth lab, but um, it keeps us sustained. Yeah. So, so. This is the reverse of Yankee shaming. This is Maya culpa. This is, my, uh, say, this is my embarrassment. This is yeah. my embarrassment. Please let me share it with you on Facebook. Yeah, it really is kind of funny. Yeah. I, I, but, I'm but not sure what you said. It is entering into a contest. Let's see who's the stupidest. <laughs> exactly. What is the basis you know, for reward for winning? <laughs> you get, there, is a, there is a prize. It is on the Energy, on the energy Commission's website. Yeah. Um, and I posted two photos from City Building. Oh, that's I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it has a different impact when you go. And you look at the pictures, uh, it just has a different impact than what you might expect. So give it a try. Okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. I, I'm just wondering how you get people all 
Yeah, it's, 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 it's a little odd. It's a little odd. Well, what's great is if you're a renter and you don't pay your right. rent, then exactly. it's kind of a, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, then it's in your face. Feel my pain, right? This yeah. is how I deal with it every day. If it's your home, then it triggers that, man, I've been in denial about this for 20 years. I'm putting this out in the world. Now, you know, next year I'm thinking about an insulation project. I'm going to remember that. So it serves as a before picture. Yeah, and, and the before yeah. pictures spur people, spur ideas. <coughs> when you start thinking about your house. And so, and then once someone else has put their picture up, maybe you'll be willing to put your picture up. So I, I, mean, yeah. I think it's, if they can get their word out, it's worth trying, you know, so if we can help get the word spread. Remind me, what the, I, did, I, did, I, did, I did read this in the emails, it's, it's all basically primitive, but the, what's the prize, what's the, what's the, what the defines winning? Yeah, um, the most creative, which would be like the editor's pick, and the person who posts the most. And what do you win? So, uh, $30 mm -hmm. gets hard to book Through the uh, Chamber of Commerce, so it's available at multiple, um, that you have downtown. Um, also, we were hoping to, even just posting photos, people could start talking on the page about solutions, like, oh, mm -hmm. here's a temporary solution, or a try. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Good, oh, good. I'll, po I'll post my, um, my, 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 my after picture then. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just maybe so much knowledge has an infrared, infrared camera. Do you guys we do. Have, do. You have we do. Mm -hmm. That would be great photos. And you yeah. can come to sure. my house on Finn Street, and think, because I know that there was a huge ice dam there two years ago. I, I don't know if we fixed it, but the infrared camera, even without snow and ice, would show the heat escaping from the east. Yeah. Would it? So always take a digital image with infrared image to give context. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. If done right. Yeah. I think I think IR cameras, you need to have some training. You can point them at a building and make the building look horrible or yes. good. If done wrong, yeah. I'd be happy to pay on reflective light and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's dramatic. So in a matter of a matter of time, can we just take a few minutes just as any ideas for them that we do need to shift? Because we need to leave as soon as five minutes. So. Oh my. Uh, actually, if if you don't mind, these guys, yeah, yeah, you guys can say, okay, great. Wayne, you got five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this is less of this. this. This is mostly an update, and thanks to two counselors who are here. But the city did a significant um, rezoning, up, what's called up zoning, adding density to the three urban districts that were basically what Northampton was before World War II. So drive around where all the old urban areas were, city council up zoned it dramatically. The area around downtown almost doubled in density, which allows so us now 17 dwelling units per acre. A lot. As a practical matter, it's, it sounds more impressive than it is because most of the area is built out and those buildings aren't being torn down. So it's you know, not like getting a lot, but you know, we, we sort of think maybe we're going to get 10 new units a year in the area which we would like new units, which could be significant. Cool. I'd just like to say, I don't know when it got passed, we've got four new units already. already. You know, and that's a month and a half. Wow. <clears throat> that's great. Wow. What was, it did make the news, and it's so. And probably as such, and there were certainly people who've been sitting holding fire and waiting for something like this. So that would. When you say four, and you got four new units. What does that mean? We've got permits in hand for four new homes. There's some four new four new units for, for being yeah, built. Yeah, because of the reduction, the, the reduction in the in the uh, area requirements. I think the first year may actually be the most right because this sort of pent up demand for doing it. And it was, you know, it was it was it was controversial. It started a lot of pushback from neighbors who were worried about it. The final concept about was unanimous, right? Yeah, uh, and uh, for all attending on the second week. Yeah. Bill's comment at the time, one of the reasons it's relevant to you all is, if we really believe in sustainability, we need to do this. We can't just talk about sustainability and encourage people to move back to the suburbs. So, mm -hmm. um, so that, was, that was significant. I think we're going to see effects. Um, we've also been trying to think about ways to get people excited about it. So this isn't just, I mean, people own the lots are excited. People who get a home next door to them aren't excited. Mm -hmm. So we've been thinking about it. So we had, we were, we just sold this. We're in the process of trying to sell a lot in the city on St. Florence. We did a big design competition. We had that we been there, but we had AP Gallery for a week showing them. It was great. Um, great. Yeah. 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 A lot of people met. Yeah, it was really yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I wasn't clear on how the two were linked. It was sort of a promotional. Right. So, to so we were just, we basically had three types. So we had this lot in Florence we're selling, mm -hmm. and we've been talking about doing design competition for a dozen years. Mm -hmm. But the competition was really around three things. One is doing a, a good house for that lot. Um, second is sort of healing that neighborhood. The neighborhood has some wonderful housing and some gaps. And frankly, the habitat houses aren't the most beautiful in the world there. 
So you know, how do we, do we use infill to make it more attractive? But the third criteria is, is a relevant one, which is how to design homes that have, have elements of being a prototype. I mean, each site is different. You couldn't pick those, those homes up and move them. But are there really good design elements to get people thinking about, you know, these 23 designs we got, some that could fit in other neighborhoods, and those four lots that, that Louie's talking about are elsewhere in town. And so that was really the piece of that. So we're, you know, all these things are on our website now. We're going to sort of post this lot that we're selling. But we're thinking we're also going to post, you have a little section that's other infill lots for sale. So if people have those lots, because, you know, we, you know, we have a goal of saying we want lots of our housing to be in these areas. You know, this is, this isn't anti-public choice. If you want to live in a rural area and want to buy a lot in Sylvester Road, that's fine. But a lot of people, for years, have wanted to live closer to downtown and just couldn't find lots available. And so it's really promoting that kind of thing. I like the fact that it really does matter in a sustainability context. You know, you, you, you've been promoting bike paths, for example, much of your career. But I think the hidden cost of transportation is it's just not it's not at the front of people's minds. You know, they, they don't realize how much how much more energy they might spend pouring in their gas tank than they do pouring out their, their leaky window. And what's interesting is the banks get it. So I, I live up at State Hospital and one of my neighbors is a minister downtown and he just bought a new log and he had a conversation with the bank who said, now I'm close up to the town and I might only own one car instead of two. Yeah. And the bank specifically, they gave them the numbers. I think it was $100,000 or maybe it was $80,000. Mm -hmm. But they say, if you're not carrying a loan for a second car, we're going to finance, again, I can remember it was $80,000 or $100,000. Huh. But that's real money. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, and, and there is a cost differential for lots really close to downtown. But I'm not sure that cost differential is $80,000. Right. So if you, you know, we're somewhat rural area. We're not going to have a lot of people with no cars. But if you go, or I mean, young people in apartments downtown, like, but in terms of homes. But if we go from two cars to one, like, you know, I now have a 17-year-old daughter who's driving, and we didn't buy a third. Sorry, we're yeah. not going to one car, but at least we didn't go to a third car, and I rejoined Zipcar, so when I need a third car occasionally, I could do it. And that works for me, because I walk most days to work. I want to, uh, uh, kind of something Scott wanted to bring up was the fact that Massachusetts has now been named for the third year in a row by ACEE as the most, you know, highest, highest level of, of uh, support for energy efficiency. Um, uh, we've got that for you in a row. But if you read inside that and the details, um, other states were rated higher on transportation, mm -hmm. such as New York. And very specifically, New York has got a, a strong effort at infill, smart growth, um, transportation, uh, transit-oriented design. And that's why they're being highlighted um, at that. So Northampton is going to pat ourselves in the back, but you're still in the back there. There is effort here to do that. It is, and I agree with you, Scott. It is, it is very important. Um, the kind of sort of free context. And you want to give a shout out for the third year? You can. <laughs> you have, you have to take this all great. <laughs> so that's all I have. Okay. So quick well, the, the, and the one thing I would add to that, of course, which was, was rather salient in the debate, was increasing affordability and access to the community. Mm -hmm. We. Uh, uh, the efficiencies, of course, are part of an allure that, that reduce costs, the size and dimensions, the infill, access to services, and so on. Um, and we often pay lip service to the concept of affordability and allow people, middle income earners, to actually live here, particularly the people who work here. Uh, but that also, to Scott's point, creating more affordability and allowing those people to live here means they're not commuting from Helmbagon to get here to work and jamming up in traffic and clogging up the, the exit ramps and so on and so forth. They're actually within easy access to the, to the systems they work in. That's all good. And it was, it's, it's a potent argument and, it's, and, and I think drove the debate in large part. So. Can I also add, because this is just, you know, this, is, this isn't a process that's done. So it's an ongoing process. So, you know, Eight months ago, before the city council got rid of parking requirements downtown, increased height, allowable height downtown to 70 feet. Um, the next two phases is still a moratorium. Even though we've increased the density, there's a moratorium on projects that are seven years or more until July. And we're going to spend that time to sort of think about what special design standards should apply to those larger projects to give comfort for the neighborhood. 
in the third densest neighborhood is URA, and URA is just weird. It's, it's a weird residual. It sort of it, it snakes through some of the URB and URC. And so the other part of this piece is looking at are there some URA neighborhoods that shouldn't be URA to be zoned for something different. Um, so, you know, this as commission may or may not be involved with, but as individuals and other part because this we go back to council and other forms and things. This, this impacts renovations too, adding living spaces and attics and such. What's that, sorry? This impacts renovations as well. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Remember design guidelines were talked about that during the zoning revisions. Yeah. I guess part part of it was to provide people who, who did not want to feel forced from their homes because of financial pressures, and then to uh, get an additional income, from, or, or they may want to reduce their space and then rent out their house at the same time to support the, the new property, the new dwelling that they're building. So the idea was retention as well. And, um, and then, you know, because we now have new guidelines on all new structures and on, on efficiencies, it's, mm -hmm. it's all of the good. That's new housing stock that um, meets our conditions and standards for, for efficiency as well. Yeah, that's great. Lower cost that, units. You know, you can't rent out an attic for $2,000 a month. Either, <laughs> One of the metrics that we had is how many homes were pre existing non conforming. That is, homes that were built that totally complied with the zoning 50 years ago. And then in 1974, the zoning got much more suburban. You know, and so we looked at. How much were we going back to allowing the things that people could have done in this town for hundred years and something couldn't do? It was like eighty percent of lots were illegal for an exactly right. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, back around. Okay. Great. Thanks, Bill. Recycle your plate. Can we take a few more minutes and go back and, and sure. see if we can help them get out the get out the neighborhood over the next two weeks, right? Basically two, two the next two weeks, what is happening at the I'm remembering, Chris, it was early this summer, I think, we were brainstorming ways of doing outreach. And I think it was along the lines of publicizing the um, strategy strategies. And I remember filling a page with yes. ideas of avenues and venues. And that's what I can Maybe I can it's get in our minutes? I don't know. Well, I, I've got it. And, and yeah. instead of going through that whole piece right now, um, I can send that to yeah, you guys. Yeah, we're happy to talk later. Right, no, exactly. Right. Just because I don't want to take up time. I think right now you can focus more on the next two weeks. You, you know, I don't live in Northampton. Um, most of you do, and so <coughs> actually I think all of you do. <laughs> um, it's, I think it's part of the requirement. Actually, part of the department. <laughs> <laughs> part of the department. So, hey, part of the <laughs> um, uh, um, so um, you know, where can they get outreach right now? And you're looking for face-to-face -face events, yeah. activities, transfer station. Yeah. Oh yeah. Saturday. That was one of the key. Free permit. Come on up. Okay. Right. Maybe a couple of two facilities. Of pictures of a couple of pictures that other people have done. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. You got the 125 Locust Street and Glendale Road. Glendale Road's a lot quieter than Locust Street is. But that's a permit driven. It's free. Come on up. We'll give you a permit. Well, thank you. High turnover. So it's too bad you weren't doing this in December because we have four council right. meetings for stormwater and flood control utility right. ward meetings going on. Right. And I'm sure it will generate some interest. But these That's other true. weeks, people are turning up their heat maybe in the first winter energy bill, so it is time to start from that. Is yeah. there a council meeting next Wednesday? I mean, next Thursday? Yeah. Yes. Um, we could do yeah. a public comment period on that. Right, I was going to say, you can come in and do a public comment, that will get you on TV. On oh, no. community oh, action. Oh, community action. <laughs> <laughs> You're not waiting for that, huh? It puts you on five TVs. Except it's just like really rash. Okay, maybe six. Can't get picked up, though, can just be really like, rash and crazy, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're speaking from experience. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> After the kneeled in those fires. <laughs> but, yeah, you get. Um, Are there any chamber meet and greet events coming up? Uh, Northampton Young Professionals Group. Have you looked at that? They do like a monthly social. Okay. And there's a whole bunch of smart tech people. and uh, Northampton Young Professionals. Last night was the Western Mass Green Consortium. That would have been perfect. That would have been perfect. Right. Oh, yeah. 
Would have been good. But all those people would already have fixed all their homes. <laughs> 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 it would have been so good. They would have some good photos. Yeah. 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 Remind me to send you the infrared images that I took of the city buildings around town. Because they're recognizable and they're at least good for having as examples. Um, Facebook. Were they on Facebook? For the council meeting when you speak, um, you're allotted three minutes. So, but you can tag team each other. So each individual is allowed three minutes. And if you want to speak on trend, you know, there's any number of people speak on any number of subjects ad nauseum over and over, you know, repeating the same thing. But it'd be great if you had unique speakers speaking to unique issues. And and as I said, that three minutes goes pretty fast. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Uh, and I've, I've, I've watched people from the audience who have really hit that three minute mark, and I've said, well, how do you do that? And they say, one page. Mm -hmm. One typewritten page. There you go. Mm -hmm. that's, that's your. <laughs> it's about the, what you can get through. What time does that mean? Seven o'clock in this room at that podium. <laughs> and I'll be sitting right here. Probably <laughs> maybe in a different hour. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? Well, you guys, I mean, you have a short window here, so I mean, that's, that's right. I mean, Ned mentioned actually a really good opportunity, but it's going to be past the time. Mm -hmm. Early in December, there's going to be a series of neighborhood meetings. That's probably, they're all probably going to be well attended, talk about some stormwater fees. Mm -hmm. um, oh. You could offer people good news or some type of, type of offset, mm -hmm. but you guys, it'll be. I think third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, the first week of December. Yeah, second and third and the sixteenth and eighteenth. That sounds right. Nineteenth? Yeah, something like that. Is there a bill um mailer going out? There is a, is actually it's, it's uh being produced right now and you should have it um residents North Anthony should have it before Thanksgiving. There's a flyer about the storm range. Yeah. Oh wow, could they get in that mailer? Yeah. Too late, it's filled. Okay. It does get pretty, but there's a lot of, it's, yeah. Yeah, it, the envelope gets pretty thick when you get your bill now. There's, there's, <laughs> basically, everyone wants to do a city announcement. It's, right, it's, 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 it's like Valpac. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's starting to get like Valpac, at which point you start to lose, you know, so that's just, here's the bill, here's the recycling. So you want, you definitely want, you don't want to oversaturate people, but. And one of the things I will send you is, is contact with the neighborhood associations. So that would be, you'd reach out to them and to see if they have an event or yeah. a way to um, perhaps send something out by email or a blast or yeah. a Facebook page. And they have different ways of doing outreach. And, Chris, yeah. what about using the listers for the awards? Um, uh, yeah, I, that, I, think I will send them that as well. Um, uh, yeah. Which are often run by counselors. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to, I'm happy to send along. Cause it, you, did you send it out to us? Yeah. Yeah, so I've got it. I can send it on to my listener. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. I'm you know, happy to do that. And I'll complain directly to Mass Safe through the DOER. <laughs> 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 Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you so much, Aiden. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you so much. Yeah. This has been so awesome. Well, I'm glad to have you in. Yeah. And hopefully we can tie it up well. a little bit and then either pass the package or continue efforts or whatever makes sense. We're, I mean, there's practice funding for all kinds of things for us if you guys need an intern in any capacity. Um, just a little plug. Who do we contact about the interns? The, Dave, the professor, the head of the um, department, or who? Yeah, we can figure that out, too. Yeah, we can let um, you know that, too. Um, um, Chris. Yeah. We I know that there's, I mean, Smith College has a job X board that you can post to, um, I don't know, I, I think that you, yeah, through SEEDS, which is the Center for Environment, Ecological Design, and Sustainability, um, they're great about, um, you know, if you're on the list or you get internships and opportunities mm -hmm. for each one of those different headings, so, you know, ecological design, sustainability, whatever it is, um, those go through Joanne Bankley, uh, B and C-K-L-E-Y. And she's lovely and uh, prompt with emails, and she's great. And yeah, so we're yeah, and that's something that we can follow up on and make sure that we have yeah, those contacts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
different avenues. I also have to say that this is welcome. Any town gown affiliation really is works to all our benefits. That that's it'd be nice to revitalize and recharge it every and it, it, from every dimension. This is a great access point, and I'm excited that you guys are part of this. So that's good. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a great learning experience. That's for sure. Ray, I hope we established the precedent. I think so. so nothing else. Although I'm sure there will be something. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> okay. Well, you're welcome to stay. I think I think I am gonna stay. Okay. Um, but I think some of the girls have to go. Okay. okay. So the next uh, next item is the Georgetown University Energy Prize. I'm gonna pass pass this around and basically give you an update and a chance for the commissioners to. Um, provide some more input. <clears throat> um, we met yesterday with the mayor and uh, a number of people from the community, that, well, from CET, CET was there, Scott was there, and uh, from the commission, no one else, okay, Scott, Scott was there, Susan Lance, who ran the Solar Ranch program, was there, um, a representative from National Grid was there, uh, a representative from uh, CET, I mean, from Columbia Gas would have been there, but there was a medical reason uh, in her family that she couldn't attend. She's very, very supportive. Um, what did I say? It says, uh, so Jim Barry. Jim Barry was there, and then Marion Goldstein from CET. I think I got invited. Um, what, I've summed, what I've summed up here is uh, just ideas that have come up, came out of that meeting, and also uh, previous comments uh, from here. Uh, from uh, the commission meetings and also some of my own thoughts into strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and uh, threats, the idea of we move forward. But by the end of yesterday's meeting, the idea was, was narrowing down to what's the, um, uh, how, you know, what's, what's, what's the cost of, of actually taking the first couple steps? Uh, Scott pointed out that uh, it gets to be more, more and more intense the farther along you get. So the beginning one is a letter of intent, and that's a really pretty minor amount. It actually allows us to get some possible help from Georgetown University on this. So um, I'm assuming that uh, I'm going to put together a, a package uh, including this. Um, uh, I'm going to put together the letter of intent package um, uh, provided to the mayor. Um, and as, assuming he'll approve it, um, I think he heard a lot of positive comments uh, yesterday. Assuming he'll approve it, we will, we will apply we will put in a letter of intent. Um, January, February, there's going to be a basic application, um, which is not available yet, but it sounds like it's going to be pretty basic. So that, again, is not a lot of time and effort. We could follow through with that. Starting in March, they would, we would need to really come up with a detailed plan to move forward. And that's by then is when we really need to make a decision. Do we follow through? Is this worth it for us to go, go for it? Five million dollars. Actually, does anybody know what I'm talking about tonight? Anybody was here last? Last time, so. This is a okay. potential Smith College intern program. Totally. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, oh, in terms of them helping us yeah. from, from now yeah, on. Right, because right. when I first looked at this, I thought we really, operationally, to, to make it happen, um, could use some more yes. hands on deck. Yes, and you'll see one of the last threats I decided that I mentioned in there is that, uh, and, and it's hard because we haven't asked yet, but we haven't got anybody from the community, great community, who said, yes, I will step forward and get involved in this. So without that, we really can't do this. I assume by the time we get to a detailed plan that we all have identified people that are willing to and, and have identified them who said they will uh, help us out. Um, but, and Smith College would certainly be uh, an obvious um, uh, help right there. So, if the commission want to take a few minutes, Scott, if you want to say anything about yesterday's meeting? I will just say that I showed up at the meeting feeling kind of skeptical, thinking, wow, this is a real long shot, and thinking that it would be a big investment with a very small chance of success. I did a 180 at the meeting, though, because, A, because there was so much enthusiasm in the room. I mean, from Chris especially to National Grid was saying, we really want to support you guys on this. We'll do everything we can, you know, starting with supporting the data acquisition and so forth. Um, but more importantly, I think it was Susan that said, we should view this not as a chance of winning $5 million, but as a chance to, you know, let's assume we don't win. What do we get out of it? So we sort of 
um, cataloged all of the benefits if we never win the prize. And they were substantial. Um, I think it was Marin pointed out that it would create some urgency to some of the programs that we already have in play. You know, just putting, it, uh, she used as an example the Solarize program. When you put that 500 kilowatt you know, thermometer up on the wall, people suddenly got engaged. And, and a deadline. And a deadline, right. So it creates urgency and, and motive. And then um, Chris pointed out a few advantages to having, um, they refer to it as a dashboard, to every month they'll, the, they'll be reporting on town-wide usage of electricity and gas. And there's nothing like information to, That's really cool. to motivate people. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, we could do this on our own, but I just sort of feel like it's a kick in the pants and a structure, and um, you know, it, it's a it's a way to glue all of these different initiatives we've got under one one big umbrella. And you know, there's no bigger umbrella than five million dollars, <laughs> even if you never get it. It's just you know, it, it's. Uh, but Alex, Alex was in the point. She said, you know, the goal to the community should be to be one of the top ten. Right. You know, if we get a chance, if we get the five million, fantastic. But the goal isn't necessarily five million; it's to try for it. But the aim is the top ten mm -hmm. um, as, as an opportunity. And if we do get to the point where we do the energy planning, um, uh, the strategic energy planning right now that we've done the community forums has mm -hmm. identified a community education and outreach effort on energy efficiency as one of the high priorities. Um, uh, and yet, when we try to identify what that looks like in the strategic energy plan. That's one that I have to say, that's a whole plan in itself. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't just say that because it's, it's too broad. This would actually give us an idea, and again, focus us, give us a goal, you know, be able to focus the community on it, hopefully, bring people in from the community, and map out that plan. And that would be the plan that we would actually to try out for two years. So that would give us an opportunity to uh, meet something that the community is asking for um, through this. So that's another one that, you know, even if we don't live the $5 million, I mean, the biggest downside I see is I have to identify just how much time does the city have staff time for it. Well, uh, my concern is, does this handcuff us? Does it actually lock us into um, <coughs> focus on trying to achieve the goals of this format? And does it divert us from possibly concentrating on areas that we might miss out on? Right. The fact the resource is dedicated to. Yeah. yeah, two points on that is that um, if you get to the point where you're applying for, if you're putting in the full plan, you can apply somewhere here, you can apply for uh, seed money for this, which can cover the cost of an uh, energy point person. Um, and secondly, when I do bring this package to the mayor to see if he wants to put in a letter of intent, I am going to map out my the, what I can see coming down the road, what would be on my plate. Um, and before we get to the next stage, to, to a more detailed application, I'll actually have budgeted that out so that you know the mayor and David Pomerantz can, can weigh in on, on you know, do we have the staff time for this? Should we think about bringing it in? I mean, David made the comment to me, we should go for it, we'll find the staff time. Um, so uh, that was, David made that comment to me in, in the office. Uh, so. That's a good attitude. Yeah. <laughs> to your question, though, Bill, would it, would it be a distraction from some of our initiatives? It, it doesn't apply to commercial and industrial, so I mean, to the extent that we would be cus we would be kind of emphasizing residential and municipal, which do count, at the expense of those sectors. I I'm not sure that the same program couldn't be used for both, but it that might be a distraction. And um, they're not necessarily mutually exclusive, that's right. but they don't. that's right. And then um, for practical reasons, they don't count residential oil usage. Yeah. What? <coughs> Well, they just say it's too hard to measure, you know, right? They do kind of leave the door open to if you can come up with a way to track it, monitor it, you know. But I think they, they sort of wanted to create a level playing field and an easy way to, to measure. So. <coughs> but it, it does. With fuel conversion, so much savings in fuel conversion. And part of, and hopefully that's part yeah, of the right. records or right. improvements. But those and that would go the wrong way if all they're measuring is gas. <laughs> Yeah, just source gas, and right. then they'd be eligible for utility rebates yeah. for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, terms of, in terms of the measurement that the contest piece is going to look at, I mean, right. every time you convert a non counted oil unit to a gas unit, you're using right. usage overall. Right. It's, it's only counted in, yeah. right, in terms of the piece that we 
what about the communities that we're competing against potentially who are who don't have access to natural gas the way that we do? How how would they you know all, all no, of those? Have, well, most communities actually, so. most communities would be the other way around. Um, most communities throughout the United States uh, have natural gas and don't have oil. Right. The Northeast is very heavy oil oil We're unusual. Forty percent seems very high. Yeah, I think that's the assessor's data, and I think it is high. I think it's inaccurate. Um, I know we found inaccuracies in that data. Um, <laughs> so, um, so I don't know exactly what it would be, but that's the only number I had plus out there. Um, and it has been. Uh, we, there has been some change because they, they put out new guidelines. They haven't finished the rules yet, and if we, we put in a letter of intent, then we have a say on the rules. So we can have, we can engage in a conversation on the rules. So they're not disappointed yet. Um, I think I think other people have brought up too. But um, they have made one change. It used to be a per capita measurement, um, residential and, and municipal per capita, and it's now residential municipal per account. So electric per accounts and gas per accounts. So when you get to the home heating, they they'll take the you know the, the oil won't be it won't be counted against us because we won't even count the oil buildings. Um, just that when we make an effort, we're going to actually you know approach people with oil heat as well, and those efforts may not count unless, as Scott says, we can come up with some way of measuring them that they accept. It's, it's going to be up to us to convince them that we have an accurate way of measuring them. Yeah, and if we do, they they might. Well, then, to Louis's point, that once we any conversions actually count as a bump up in energy consumption mm -hmm. because their their recording is zero right now because they don't exist right in, in, in the data. Right. So that that you add a conversion yeah. and suddenly suddenly we 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 adversely impact our uh, competitive numbers. That might be an easy thing to adjust for. Right. Just say right. conversions right. don't count. Or, right. You know, right. Exclude those accounts from the count. But that's where those Right. You're right. Absolutely. We could ask if, if we increase the number of accounts, you know, in theory, it's, we could say that they're conversions and ask for a bump. Right. For the an offset that was actually. You know, the, right. You could do a, a backwards base on what, what they have used in oil for the right. equivalent terms of gas. Yes. That's my comment yeah. the big picture of this. Like, I think how Susan approached it is a really good idea that if this process is valuable in its own right, then it can lead to something whether we have a big pot of money or not. Right. But how do you design a proposal to a $5 million project saying, even if we don't win it, we're still going to implement X, 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 and X? The $5 million is a prize. It's not. Oh, it's not like yeah, you're not money. looking for oh, ways okay. to spend five million. Well, well, actually, they do ask you to propose ways that you would use the five million to the benefit yes, of the community. Yes, but it's not the mean. Right. Right. That's sort of after the fact. Right. Right. Got it. Okay. That's just the price. Your programs have to be. So party is out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, clearly. One community. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, and no, there's not. <laughs> that may be something we have to mention to you know, just a couple of runner-up prizes might actually entice a few more people. But. Yeah, I mean, talk about gap. <laughs> it's like, so, a little extreme. Right. Yeah. And I'd like to hear their rationale for that. Right, I picked them out. I think it was just to get people's attention. <laughs> One million would have gotten it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One million dollar prize. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's wrong. Okay. It's wrong unless we win. So, so, so towards that, I mean, for, basically this was meant to be a report back on where we stand on this. Um, but also, if anybody has further ideas, I haven't heard any ideas that come that, that have been talked about here that haven't been, I haven't already written up in this this piece there. So, if people have other ideas, I'd be happy to take them. They, you know, go into for the mayor to consider when uh, we do do the letter of intent and ask them about that. I'll throw up the uh, utility flag as they often do. Just be careful in jumping on board whatever utilities want to do because it may be more in their best interest than in our best interest. Right. Now, we would be running the piece, and none of the, the utilities are thrilled, both of them. I mean, they have really, are, they are really excited about North Africa considering this. Neither one of them has said they're going to put money or staff towards it. Right, right. That's why um, they're excited. Right. Exactly, because <laughs> it's nothing there needs. Yeah, exactly, uh, right. right. Advances their cost, but it, and that's that's an upside that it they is. get to buy in from them, yeah. which is yeah. hard to do anyway. I mean, the data, if they could bring real data, which uh, is a closed book right now, then that uh, alone is a benefit. Yeah. We're, it we're, is. We're the process. Right. That's something that I've tried that for a while. <coughs> you can get an annual data count from them, 
uh, by law, I think they have to go and they have to give you an annual aggregate um, numbers, but to get it on a monthly basis. You'd have to make a big ticker downtown, like the, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the Silver State. <laughs> right, right. Like, you know, <laughs> dollar spend or something like that. Right. Forgive me if I missed this, it's so possible. Is there, is there a minimum size community? 5,000. Five to two fifty, and it turns out that's sixty-five percent of the nation. So. <laughs> wow. Oh, so two hundred feet. You can't be larger than two hundred fifty. Yes. Right. And then so if, you're, sort of and if you're if you're smaller than five thousand, you can they change the rules there. If you're if there's contiguous universe uh, uh, municipalities, you can join together and keep yourself up to the five thousand level. You know, as long as you meet some uh, criteria that they have. So really, the cap of two fifty is. I tried to do some mental math to figure out how many might likely apply for this. I don't know how well publicized it was, but there could easily be four to six thousand communities in that demographic. Who knows how many of them even know about this? But right. How many of you know about it? Yeah. How, how many of you are going through the same discussion? Mm -hmm. yeah, how did you find? How did you find out about? Things just pop up. Yeah. <laughs> it just came across your screen. So, yes. yes, it came across your screen. Or the transfer, as it were. Whenever something comes by that has money attached to it, I open the email. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bad habit. <laughs> no, I'm a Nigerian. <laughs> 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 I, I, I All right, I think that will make it there. We're not suffering enough to win. Honestly. <laughs> well, the that's a good point. And we've well, already picked a lot of the low-hanging fruit, too. Yeah. You know, well, my, my, take, my take on that, and I really, if you were going to hire someone to do something, would you hire someone who hasn't done anything yet? Or would you hire someone who's had some practice? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, 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 so, I mean, to me, I actually, think it. Let's go for it. I actually think that a community that hasn't done anything yet is going to have a hard time even putting together the plan and, mm -hmm. and going through this. They don't have experience. Well, I, I would so, say it. A city like Hoya, which controls its own power generation system with hydroelectric, um, it might not be a bad idea for them to investigate something like this. Uh, particularly since they don't really have a lot of commercial, they don't have a lot of commercial left, so that it would mostly be residential incentives, and they would have the room to be flexible. I'm, I'm not going to go advertise it. They still have to get business. their, they still have to get their residents right. to. I mean, we have the strongest energy efficiency programs in the nation. That's and not only though, because they're in the So they won't be, uh, they can't access any of those programs. That's right, they can't. So what, what I'm saying is, is that we have, we have the best. Yeah. And, and, you know, for a statewide as a nation. And you can still go to the energy forum meetings, self-selected audience, and two-thirds of the people haven't heard of Mass State. Right. So. <laughs> I didn't need, I'm on the energy commission, didn't know to take my air conditioner out. So go get <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> right, we have room oh, for, we have lots of room for improvement. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Especially you get private partners and you get like a thermostat company start going door to door, doing their own marketing. There's more innovative ways to get more of the low hanging fruit. Um, so that's where it stands, that's where we're heading. Uh, and I guess. It's exciting to go for it. I, I think it's great to go for it. Beats a scratch ticket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a casino, not that I'm pointing any fingers. <laughs> Um, any other comments from the commission on this? Yes. So having been part of the SolarEyes team, um, the initial email that went out that, that people responded to, hundreds and hundreds of people, so we sorted that. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Solar 101, we had over 100 people, and I entered every single one of their email and mail addresses, and we had another, we had the Solar 201, as it were, I entered all those. And we reached out to these people through, I set up a MailChimp thing for SolarEyes, and we kept reaching out to these people, and it, it worked very well. The email, we had terrible social media sort of coverage until Real Goods came on, but, um, and then they went to all the, uh, did people see SolarEyes people at the farmer's markets, mm -hmm. and, you know, we had a couple of events, and it, it was spectacular success. So, I mean, I can see us, with minimal effort, getting 500 people to make the effort and make the changes. The thing it's, is, it's it, 500 it, it, people yeah. enough. The, the thing, I just want to put that in the context of the project they're working on is that, you know, solar is great because it's so visual. And, yeah. And you know, okay, the more you'll sign up, the better the price break down. I put the system on it's simple to understand. Energy efficiency, you know, getting people to 
commit to investing, to retrofit, to understanding, to making sense of the numbers, even the having a, a energy modeling tool to tell you the savings you're gonna get, all that's so loaded well, there are a couple of couple of layers. There's like something like the Nessie pamphlet that says the top ten things you can do to save energy in your house right now. You know, and this is a pamphlet that was made seven years ago and it's still <laughs> true. You know. It's old looking, but it's still the truth. I, I would I'm gonna be very sorely pressed to I'd be sorry tempted to do that very kind of survey before we put our plan together. Mm -hmm. So in January, February, to do that kind of survey. And I, I do agree, we, it, it's not going to be as easy as the solar act. You're going to have to be very careful with how the, how, the, how the survey is worded, what you're asking them for, because energy efficiency is so much more complicated. But I think that will be um, very informative on what we might be able to do with our plan when we put the plan together. Um, and it, it had smashing success. Uh, and, and the idea of a survey worked in Harvard, Harvard Mass had worked in Montague when we did it, and then when we brought it to Northampton, they did, I mean, Northampton just took that, the success of the survey and just jumped it up another level. And then bring people together at the meeting. Yeah, and, and I mean, even you're talking about the energy forum at the state level, right? I mean, if we did an energy, I mean, in Forbes Library or whatever public space, if, if we had a group of volunteers, to commit to staff a, a half hour, you know, once a month on pick a morning, Saturday morning, come and, and you know, learn how to save energy in your house. I, I would walk over to the library and I would run that for half an hour, mm -hmm. you know, once a month or once once a week for whatever time we wanted to publicize. You know, there, there are ways that, that it would be different than solar apps, but if we made it regular and part of your regular thing, you know, at the, yeah, you know, Okay. Thank you. Oh, no. All right, yeah. I'm back. I'm, I'm, I was afraid of it at first. Operationally, I just thought it was a nightmare. But <laughs> okay. Well, that's what we want to figure out. Yeah. We want to figure out whether or not it would be a nightmare, yeah. or whether it would be worth worth going for. But I think just the effort of trying. To and Susan, Susan, yeah, that's yes, she's absolutely right. I'm fine, Susan. Okay. <laughs> Any other comments from the commission? Listen, uh, you guys have a much better sense of what you're staring down the barrel of than, than we do. We're the big ideas people. And I keep guys at the implement it. And if you're up for it, then I'm, I say go for it. When Chris said he was enthusiastic about this and wanted to work on it, that's when I did my money. <laughs> Maybe that was what did it. Well, that, exactly, I mean, because this, is, this falls mostly on your plate. So yes. if you're down with it and you're psyched about it, and there's yeah. a possibility of getting some funding for help, too. Yeah. Right. And, and interns. <laughs> and interns. <laughs> Exploitable interns. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> take advantage of us. There's a slogan. We're going to be a meme like that on social media. <laughs> Okay, so should we go on to the next? Um, strategic energy planning, I have another hand out to pass around. Um, and this one, our last energy commission meeting was after the Forum 201, um, but we didn't have the firm results yet. So this, this is the, these are the results. At, at Forum 201, they got to look at the 120 some odd ideas that had come out of Forum 101. And, um, How was the turnout for that, by the way? What's that? How was the turnout for that? Uh, it wasn't as big as one one but it was still a solid, still a solid um, uh, performance. I've been to the one and... Yeah, um, I went to the one that Furpa ran, and we had better attendance than their 101 um, at, our, at both of ours. So even though that was for three towns, we had better attendance. I think we had like 60 people or so. I don't think we had a count. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so in, in the meantime, the 120 some ideas had been roughly broken down into a number of different categories. Um, these 18 or 19 categories that are here, and uh, they we had. You could go in and actually speak to it, learn specifically about four of the topics, but at the end, everybody prioritized what were their top priorities. So, of the people that were in the community, 
um, these, here's the prioritization. And this list has, um, I, have, I have weighed in on kind of the city's approach, I mean, not so much from the community, but from the city, from city staff, what would be our approach? How would we prioritize, prioritize these? What should we have as um, uh, a short time, uh, short time piece, a long term project? Um, which ones really don't fit or do fit? Uh, Wayne has weighed in on this, um, and the working group will do so as well. Um, but I really thought the commission should have a chance um, to weigh in on this as well. So I thought I would give you a few minutes just to read through this and give me some of your ideas on, on how you see Northampton moving on any of these projects. Scott's uh, transportation did 18 hits on that. Uh, so this is the yeah, yeah. most popular one. Yes. Is, are some of these already in the works? Oh, they could be. Like LED lights, already. Microgrid is as well. Great. Right. Yeah, some of them are, are, are already in the works. And that all kind of almost automatically makes them a, a short term piece. Solar and local landfill. Nobody knows what district energy is, I guess. Um, it could be, but I actually agree with them. There's very yeah, low priority. No, it doesn't, it wouldn't, it's, there's not enough. Yeah, for district energy, you need a, oh, you need okay. to identify a sizable year-round heat load. Um, or process. More of a UMass. You know, the, the hospital has, the, the hospital in a way has, you know, it, it hypes in heat. And that's because it has a year-round need for high, high temperature steam and stuff like that with processes. So. Um, if there was someone in the industrial park that had a year-round need for a lot of heat, then I could see possibly building a district heating plant around that. It's a huge, complicated piece. Um, it would really suck up all the oxygen. <laughs> Not super so, for downtown. Okay. Yeah. It's amazing. Europe does a lot of this, and um, it's it's having a hard time jump starting in, in, in back in the United States. College campuses still do it. Just been college has it. Um, anaerobic digestion. We already have a methane burning generator at the landfill. Yeah. So doesn't that compete with that? I mean, they're capturing methane. They're not digesting to create methane, but right. they're capturing yeah. what yeah. sort of comes off of it. Now. We've been approached by a couple of different companies. Um, our site assigned area to the landfill, one being Harvest Energy, the other one being AG Energy, Ag Energy, about building a composting facility there as part of a, uh, basically a, a city business plan. Um, the Ag Energy is looking for a place to macerate all the organic waste and bring it to the dairy farms. So they're also interested in an area that's been site assigned also. But there's been no plan put forth. There's just been conversations, and that's it. So neither of those would actually compete with, if you will, the existing. Uh, no, the landfill stands on its own. In fact, right. probably another 10 to 12 years that uh, a methane gas to energy facility would probably be closing down because mm -hmm. it's already expended its life. Mm -hmm. the landfill gas curves only about 12 to 15 years. Oh, okay. Coke plant all right, is is uh, they're on version. Three, I think, of their digester. They've not had a good. They've not had good luck with it. Um, they have. I mean, they have the generator that's supposed to burn it. It's, it's they're awfully lonely. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I don't think they've got. You know. Well, their new plant's coming online sometime next month or yeah, January. Well, but that's you know the, the old plant was pretty fancy. Yeah. Just 
didn't work out. It wasn't right. that old. It's well, never worked. Yeah. I mean, from the from the beginning. So hey, this is not it's not simple technology. Is all I'm saying. You know that that the technology is pretty sophisticated to get something that really works. We we actually have anaerobic digestion at the waste water treatment plant that's been shut down and hasn't for, been used for years. For years. It's been right. Shut down. Right. Actually, through the comprehensive wastewater management plan, local planning, East Hampton is looking at. Uh, some type of regional sludge composting facility. So there could be something in the works down the road, but um, not nothing defined yet. Okay. Yeah. Another comment I have is on the second energy efficiency one. Um, that just seems like a mouthful. Yeah, in one initiative. That's that's what I said. And that, and that was my that was my response as well. Back to them. I said this could be a plan in itself. I mean, yeah, I don't. Yeah, how do I'm you, not how surprised do you it got a high priority because it's like the kitchen sink. Energy efficiency right. marketing implementation. Yeah, that's true. Deep energy retrofits, contractor training, renewable heating, and fuel switching. Well, that's that's the um, well, uh, that's the Georgetown <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> University Energy Plan. Yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. That's it exactly. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Done. That's that would do it. That would, yep. That would put it together. Yeah. And then the energy disclosure ordinance. Why do we need commercial buildings to disclose their energy use? I mean, not that it's a bad thing, but I can certainly see the motive for multifamily. In uh, New York City has done this, and I think Boston has done this now. Mm -hmm. And New York City, um, I saw a presentation on it. It's rather sounding. Um, Mary, maybe you know, because I saw it at a Nessie conference. Um, there's something like 2% of the commercial buildings use 98% of the energy. Of the commercial energy. And in that, if you take the buildings and categorize them by type, you'll have, you know, any one type of building, you will have, you know, real energy sippers and huge energy hogs, which really indicates that there are, you know, certain process buildings or whatever, certain types of buildings where there's someone doing it far, far better than you are. And that is now visible. To are the we talking about leased space? Uh, I'm wondering about the disclosure part. Yeah, Why? in in um, in New York City, I'm not sure that in Boston, New York City, it was it was your energy use. It was a, you know if a. But is the point that it's a, the or, owner is not paying the bill, so you need disclosure so that. No, this was purely commercial energy use. We want to know what your energy use is. They said you have to show it to the community. It's um, yeah, yep, exactly. I mean, you would think it would strike the privacy, the, the privacy thing. But New York's done it, Boston's done it, and as you as your point earlier, Scott, is that once you shine a light on something and actually see it, then all of a sudden there's a lot of attention that goes yeah. goes towards that. Okay. Um, I think New York City also has a requirement that they reduce energy use by a certain amount. Those large, largest users have to reduce amount. Mm -hmm. um, well, so do we do that here? I don't know. Uh, proportionally, our commercial consumption compared to Boston and New York, and also, you know, Boston, uh, New York functions as its own state, and Boston is the state of Massachusetts, so they, <laughs> they uh, 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 on one hand, since we have such a limited inventory of large commercial uh, energy consumers, compared to the per capita consumption, I think that, I, I think that that would translate politically as basically being a disincentive for investing in the community. We, we clearly want people low energy consuming energy systems, but at the same time, uh, the existing ones were, were struggling with retention. And, uh, you know, the Yankee shaming model comes back into place. And I think carrot, more carrot, less stick would certainly serve us in that regard. I think here the residential application is much more relevant yeah, because of our rentals. I, it, right. it clearly so has to be sell a work man in the building. Right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And in that level of that, in, in, in that inventory, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's a great one to work on because it's so easy. You get council will pass it. And <laughs> well, there you go. That's right. <laughs> council thing. <laughs> it's a, it's a easy, easy. Yeah. We're all a bunch of bobbleheads. Can you take care of that before you go? Yeah, right. Oh, we are at 5.30. I didn't I actually have that. to go. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are basically done. I mean, the only thing I'm going to put out there, the last thing is um, ongoing projects. Um, Solarize Northampton. Uh, there's been a press release that went out that said we uh, that we had 108 systems that for 706 kilowatts. And the contractors say that that is premature. 
um, that they had some paperwork still going through, and they expect um, to have about 20 more contracts, and they expect their final kilowatt to be over 800 kilowatts. Um, but I'm pushing them for them to get us their final numbers um, so that we can get, get our own press release out. That's that's at the bar higher. Should have done for a minute. Yeah. So it's one of the, I mean that if we hit that if we hit that amount, we have beat every town that's taken part in solar rise, including Boston. Arlington had the highest number um, before this. Um, we will have done more than any town that's done solar rise. Wow. Um, that's certainly and if we don't, we're still in second yeah. place. So um so it's Hampton. Okay. Go to Northampton. Have a piece of cake. Thanks, you guys. Good night. Thank you so much. I guess we're done. I move that we adjourn. Yes. Oh, yeah. Second. All in favor? Bye. You can have those if you want them. Okay. 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 It's a relic now. Yeah. No. Nice to meet you. Okay. I'm going to talk to you. Great. It's got to wore it out, huh? talk to a girl named Deb at the front office, and it's a one-page form, and I sign it, and to campaign, to different locations for each on site, but on a Saturday, you're talking thousands of people. I mean, on a Saturday. Well, that's the problem. It opens at 7 and closes at 4. Yeah, we have about 5,000 stickers for residents to use it, and the majority from in on Saturday. It's a non-stop line of cars and people. Okay? No problem. I was I was giving the, I wasn't giving the commission an opportunity to give feedback because I noticed that I mean it's, you know you give this work and it's always it's yeah, always struck me that I think it was important to do the working group since we didn't want to burn out the commission. We're not looking at um, I wanted to get the most of the job. We used some very specific places in the community. Mm -hmm. Church, 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 church. So I wanted to bring them in. President, right. uh, president, but the commission's right. role is yeah. this kind of guidance. And so, well, that's what we're seeing change so anyway. The whole, you know, yeah, it's based how we still do the working group. That was, the problem is, of course, with all the other we have had a, we will have another working group meeting. That's why we relate to a place by the restaurants. Have been kind of slow moving forward. We're also seeking for liquor licenses, but the fact is, is that makes us a destination. Yeah. Again, oh, I've got to say, anybody can have a ten oh. too if they want. Population influx in the weekend, so like but then at the end, it's also remarkably vulnerable to say, "Oh, I'll go a casino yeah. down the road." No, take a whole back. Sweet. Well, you got more you than that. I don't want to take things. some of them. These are awesome pens. Somebody else could be using these. Mm -hmm. I'll take some of work. I mean, how come we're going to have? We're going to have. I have a bunch at home. All right. <laughs> I have a bunch in our office. I stuck a bunch in our office. I said, "I'll grab a couple right here." Thanks. See you guys. See ya. I've heard he's a very fantastic, he's an awesome pen. Oh, very okay. smooth writing. Awesome pen. Smooth writing pen. I'll yep. take a smooth Very writing. good. Okay. Take, take, take a couple. Take a couple. Take couple. Stick them in your drawer. Okay. Back up. Back up. <laughs> there you go. Just leave them on the desk. That's, That's good. good. It's better than those. Can I hit the lights? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there another meeting time? I don't know. So a couple of people wandered in looking confused. Right. But... And how about TV? Is that... Oh, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to record all night. Yeah. <laughs> Good night.